Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the iPhone 12 has been out for a little while now and if you've seen the performance testing I've done here on this channel and over on the Speedtest G channel, you will see that this is a very fast device. However, lots of people have been commenting that it has thermal throttling problems. That means when it gets too hot, it slows down dramatically. So of course, I've investigated to find out what really is happening. So if you want to find out more, please, well, let me explain. So the iPhone 12 is a very interesting device. As you saw here on this channel, compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it is significantly faster. I've also tested against the uh, Asus ROG Phone 3 over on the Speedtest G channel, uh, and it obliterated the ROG Phone 3. I've also got tests coming up against the Note 20 Ultra and the uh, OnePlus 8T. Now, the point is this, is that because this is a five nanometer uh, chip inside of this device, it's the latest architecture from Apple, okay, it can give a good um, uh, performance bursty, bursty. That means it just can do it and then it can cool down. But some people are saying, oh yes, but if you run it for a long period of time, the performance tanks, the performance just goes down. Now, thermal throttling is actually a fact of life for any passively cooled device because when you are generating heat, you're running the processor at a certain voltage, a certain frequency, there's gonna be heat produced and you have to get rid of that heat. And if you can't get rid of it actively with a fan or some kind of ventilation system, then you have to lower the clock frequency, lower the voltage of the device, of the processor, so the device has a chance to cool. And then when it's cool enough, you can then bump up performance again. Thermal throttling happens on Android phones, happens on uh, iOS phones. It's a fact of life. Uh, physics really you can't change the laws of physics I can't change the laws of physics now to test the iPhone 12 what I do is I run speed test G that gives us a time code for how long it takes to run the tasks that are in speed test G now the last part of speed test G is a unity test and the unity test runs for 15 16 seconds whatever it is but just a few seconds I have another version of that exact same unity test that runs for 30 minutes. So it keeps doing that flyover again and again and again for 30 minutes. And so what I do is I run speed test G, get a time. I then run the UT test for 30 minutes to really push the GPU, really push the CPU and the device will heat up. And then I run the speed test G again to see whether there's a drop in performance. And then in fact, I repeat that again and again and again, as many times as I can really before the battery doesn't allow it to happen anymore. And that's what I've done. So let's see what I found out. So when I ran Speedtest G the first time, I get the same score as I have in the videos. That's one minute and three seconds. And the back of the device using my laser thermometer was uh, 22 degrees. I then set it off running the unit test for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, I ran Speedtest G again. First thing, the second run of Speedtest G after 30 minutes of intensive uh, Unity gaming kind of simulation uh, went from one minute, three seconds to one minute, seven seconds. So just a four second difference, which is less than 5%. Now when I tested the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I have that video here on this channel, we were talking about a 15% difference in uh, performance from when it was cool compared to when it was warm. Now, it's also interesting, using my thermometer at the laser thermometer, I found that the temperature at the back of the device had gone up from 22 degrees to 44 degrees. So that's a huge leap in uh, temperature. It went up there, well, it doubled, basically. So that is significant. And I'm wondering whether things like how people hold the device, ambient room temperature, whether they've got a case on it and so on, will certainly affect, because 44 degrees is a significant temperature and that needs to dissipate. And the other interesting thing was the battery went down from 100% to 83%. So a 17% battery use for 30 minutes of gaming. Anyway, after that 30 minutes and after running Speed G, I then ran it again. I ran the UT test for another 30 minutes and let it just sit there uh, heating up, doing work, doing GPU stuff, doing CPU stuff. And then again, after that 30 minutes, I did another Speed G run. And interestingly, the result was exactly the same, one minute and seven seconds. And the back of the device was now around 42.5 uh, degrees. And the battery had gone down again significantly. It was now down to 64%. 
I then ran the unit test again for another 30 minutes and the back of the device at the end of that test was around 43 degrees and again speed test G returned the result of one minute and seven seconds. So the performance when it was hot is slightly lower than when it's cooled. However, it did not degrade now over this is one and a half hours of intensive gaming, but the battery had gone down now to 43%. I then did one final run, another 30 minutes. The back of the device remained at 43 degrees and Speedtest G this time came in at one minute and eight seconds. So a one second difference there between the previous runs and now the battery was down to 23%. I didn't risk another run after that because I thought if I do, it's gonna be like 3% battery, so I decided to stop there. So what are the takeaways? Well, first of all, we know the back of the device does heat up significantly, 22 degrees right up to 44 degrees, and it hovers around there, plus or minus kind of a degree or so. Secondly, the performance does not fall off. One minute, three seconds for a cool run, one minute, seven, one minute, eight seconds for a warm run when the back of the device is 44 degrees and so on. However, interestingly, the battery does get hammered. I mean, basically, I ran this for two hours and the battery went down from 100% to 23%. I could have maybe squeezed in one more run, so that would have been two and a half hours and the battery would have been dead. Now, that's pretty interesting because maybe for social media, for photography, for web browsing, playing, you know, 2D games, maybe it's not going to be an issue with the battery life. But if you are playing heavy, intensive 3D gaming, then the battery may not withstand because I certainly wouldn't want to be on a train journey or a bus journey, play an hour of a game and then find that half my battery has disappeared. That would make me feel that the rest of my day is going to be uncertain because I don't know whether my phone's going to run out of battery or not. Now, this is also interesting because it shows us kind of a clue of what we're going to see in the new M1 base Max. Obviously, they get warm, but there's a way of dispersing that heat. And even when it is warm, the performance isn't going to drop off that much. I have a MacBook Air with an M1 processor on order, should be delivered in the next three, four days time. And then I can start doing my testing on that to see what I can find out about the processor and the thermal throttling and the performance and the app compatibility and the emulation on the new M1. But talking of the iPhone 12, does it thermal throttle? Not really, not really, can't say that. Does it eat the battery? Absolutely, and that's something that you need to watch out for. Okay, my name is Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. It seems that we're all at the mercy of the YouTube algorithm, whether it gives recommendations for you to watch my videos or not. So the best way to make sure you see the videos that I make is to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it, I'll see you in the next one.